Eric Ten Hag coming in as Manchester United manager next season is a fascinating appointment. But what does football manager expect to happen when he takes over? Let's find out. Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Clates and today we're going to go back to basics. We are going to go and do a basic football manager simulation because with the news that Eric Ten Hag has been made the Manchester United manager for next season, it's always intriguing to find out what does the game expect to happen? What does FM22 expect to happen? Will it see into the future? We're going to go and do a five-year simulation with Ten Hag at Manchester United and just see what happens. Let's get into it. Before we do jump into it, a quick reminder to subscribe to the channel if you are new here and you haven't already subscribed. Even if you've been here a while and you've not yet tickled that little button, why have I said tickled? If you've not done that already, though, make sure you do so. Is that something we should start saying tickled? No, we're not We're not even going there. Thank you very much for your ongoing support, though. And also, thank you to the Patreon members, the, the, those members over on Patreon. Your names are in the video. Somebody like Oliver French just saw his name along there. If you want your name in the video, then you can go and join on Patreon, too. The link is in the description. Thank you for all of your support. Let's get into the rest of our simulation. Let's go. Okay, then here we are then. And as you can see, Eric Ten Hag is the Manchester United manager and the date is the 8th of June, 2022. We're going to go and simulate from this point on when he takes over as the manager. And I've made sure the Manchester United have finished outside of the top four. Yes, I know they finished fifth, which, which does seem a little bit unlikely right now. You're probably going to expect them to go into the Conference League, maybe. But then again, it is possible that they finish in the Europa League spots. We're going to go from here. They won't be in the Champions League, and I think that's significant. We're going to go and find out what does Ten Hag choose to do as you see his profile there. Look, what does he do with the transfers here? Who does he bring in? What type of system does he play? We'll check in with all of those things. How does he play Cristiano Ronaldo up front? Pogba, what happens? happens to him all of these little narratives that we're going to find out how he deals with when he does come in as the manager in real life but let's see what football manager thinks is going to happen as we go and simulate one season at a time so first of all we'll go to 2023 now and see Eric Ten Hag at Manchester United will he be a success I will see you in one year okay first season is in the bag then we're in 2023 and Manchester United have finished fifth in the table again so wherever we think they're going to finish next well the end of this season whether it's in the conference league or in the europa league if fm is going to be correct a year's time from now they will be finishing fifth and outside of the champions league again manchester city have won the league then it's chelsea above liverpool and then arsenal make the champions league where spurs down in seventh leicester in between them there look it's a 70 point season with 21 wins 10 losses would this be the type of season that you'd expect next year from eric ten Hag? i mean maybe manchester united fans might expect a little bit more maybe this is a little bit more realistic i'm not quite sure i've just seen as well erling Haaland did sign for manchester city and scored 24 premier league goals there which maybe you'd expect that to happen too let's go and check out what type of system did Ten Hag play? What transfers did he make? In fact, we'll start with the transfer history too. They spent big in the summer then. As you can see, £220 million has been spent. Whichever, um, we're trying to think about which positions he wants to bring in here. Things like right back, centre back, centre mids, probably maybe even a striker as well. In terms of that striker, Alexander Izak has joined for £77 million, according to FM. Fabio Carvalho somehow has had a bit of a U-turn and hasn't gone to Liverpool as everyone expects him to do, but has ended up at Manchester United with Ten Hag. They've signed Eriksen on a free transfer. Tielemans has come in as one of those midfielders. Dedic, Demaral, Gilberto for £28 million. Elias Hagen, a bit cheaper. Duran, uh, Yarmolyuk and Ortega and Tete. They spent big money on Tete as well, which maybe some of those you could potentially see happening. Do you know what? I can kind of see a little Ericsson move to Manchester United. Probably not, but do you know what? With Ten Hag there, maybe with the Ajax links, I'm not sure. But he's been very, very good, hasn't he, at Brentford? Tielemans, maybe that midfield spot. Izak, if they do want to bring in a striker. Not sure these are the ones that I would predict would happen in real life but i can kind of see the thinking behind it also this is interesting too some of these sales that you can see over here they've sold diallo they've sold alanga to west ham for 23 million wan Basaka, as most people are kind of saying he, he's not going to fit what eric ten Hag wants to do on that right back spot wan Basaka has been sold to everton in this one for 18 million pounds to anzebi has gone matic everyone expects him to leave has left fred's gone out on loan what did happen to players like Pogba I believe they probably were released and did move on yeah he's at Real Madrid is Paul Pogba let's have a look at the tactics that Ten Hag has been employing then 
with this 4-2-3-1. And there you can see it in the Sebastian Aller role up front. Cristiano Ronaldo is playing. He's got 11 goals. You got Fernandez behind him in this, what people are probably going to call like the Tadic role potentially. Almost like a false nine, but in behind the striker there. Sancho and Tete. Eriksen McTominay. Varane Demaral. So Demaral was the main centre-back signing. Dallo getting lots of starts at right back. Shaw and then De Gea. There's a bit of a conversation about De Gea or Henderson next year. Or maybe even go sign another goalkeeper. This is what... FM expects, although Isaac actually did play quite a lot of games too. So maybe Cristiano Ronaldo did drop out for some of those games. Did score 21 goals. Look, this is what FM is expecting. Harry Maguire not starting. I guess what we need to do now is let's go another season and see if what changes. See if any other players are brought in and just see what happens really. I'll see you in a year. Okay, then here we are in another year then. 2024 now and... To be honest, in terms of the Premier League, same old for Manchester United with Eric Ten Hag, who, by the way, is still in charge. I did check. It's another fifth place finish. They finished on 77 points. So that is an improvement, actually, from the 70 from last year. They've got a very decent looking goal difference. Well, they're getting a little bit closer to this top four, but still finishing outside the Champions League, which I wonder if that is going to be, you know, impacting the signings that they can make at this stage. Would this now be... What you'd expect if you're a Manchester United fan. How quickly would you be expecting your team to get back into the Champions League under Ten Hag? Let's check out some of the players that he's been using then. As you can see, he is still in charge at the club. Let's have a look at the transfer history. £144 million spent this time around. And one of those signings is maybe one that people would expect to come in this coming summer. Anthony has been brought in for £71 million from Ajax. The uh, the sales, not so much. The uh, the Glazers, they're splashing out some money with the uh, just, well, £144 million being spent and only £3.4 million being brought in. They have spent some big money there. Cavani did eventually leave on a free there. Look, after staying last year, maybe people would expect him to leave this coming summer, actually. They've also brought in Bailey Peacock Farrell as a backup goalkeeper, I assume. Parisi for £6 million. Luis Alberto, the former Liverpool midfielder, for £52 million. He is really good in FM, isn't he? And then Robin Lenormand, who is a decent centre-back too from Real Madrid for £13 million. It wasn't really enough then to improve the league standings too much, but they're getting that little bit closer. Let's have a look at what the tactic screens looks like in terms of the player outputs or the, you know, the stats on here. It, this does suggest that Isaac is starting, although Cristiano Ronaldo did play more games than him again this year. Got himself 11 goals. Isaac got 15. It looks like Bruno Fernandes is very much the star in this Ten Hag system. 23 goals from this attacking midfield spot there. That would be quite a return from Bruno, wouldn't it? You see the rest of the team too. Alberto alongside Tielemans. Lenormand starting with Demaral. Gilberto at right back. Dallo going to left back. De Gea still in goal. Rashford, Anthony Fernandes and Isaac up front. Some uh, other performers down there. I just scrolled down so you can see some of the stats. Jaden Sancho did play lots of games. Uh, Luke Shaw did play lots of games too. Varane did play 45 times. I'd expect him to continue to be the starter in this side. What we will do, by the way, is have a look at the cup competitions and everything at the end. But I'm conscious I want to get to the five-year mark. In fact, what we're going to do now is jump all the way to five years in the future and we're going to go look back on the previous few seasons will manchester united get into that top four will they win a title will they win some trophies i guess let's go and find out okay then we are now five years into our simulation the year is 2027 and the interesting news is that Diego Simeone is now the Manchester United manager. Eric Ten Hag is no longer in charge. They've swapped managers. They've sacked him at some point in this five-year period. Although I'm looking, they do still list him as a favoured personnel, which does suggest that he's been quite successful. Let's find out when they did change that manager. Was it recently or did he survive not much longer? Okay, he was there for four years and 166 days. They have sacked him in 2026 november so november of this season actually simeone's only been there for 169 days i'm looking as well that he won five cups during this time there are the career milestones we said we'd look at this a little bit later he won the europa league the carabao cup the european super cup the europa league again and the carabao cup not necessarily the big trophies during his time at Manchester United. But five trophies nonetheless, which if you're a United fan right now, you'd probably take one or two trophies in the future soon, wouldn't you? Maybe that would still be a little bit disappointing. Europa Leagues though, two of them, two Carabao Cups and two Europa Leagues and then a European Super Cup. Would you be happy Manchester United fans? You'll have to let me know in the comments down below, won't you? Let's go and find out 
what happened then in terms of transfers during that time. All of the transfers that we will see on here will actually have been Eric Ten Hag signings, wouldn't they? Because Simeone would have had a January and a January only. So let's go back to season number three to see what happened next. These are the next signings that came in then. He spent, or Manchester United as a club did spend 194 million. But look at this. They sold players for 187 million pounds. So basically broke even over this, this particular summer. It was Isaac that left for big, big money. 103 million pounds up front going to Bayern Munich, but they reinvested it by signing Sandro Nemecha, Mere, the goalkeeper, 74 million pounds on Mere to replace De Gea, you'd assume. And then Memphis Depay returning to Manchester United, Paolo Bernardo, Masrawi, which I think is an interesting one because his contract is running out in the summer in real life. Will Manchester United with Ten Hag now try and convince him to join? He's a right back and we've talked about the right back being a position where maybe they need to change it with wan not being very good, in my opinion. Anyway, but it does also seem that maybe Masrawi is off to uh, Barcelona, it seems, in terms of speculation anyway. They also signed Ian Fortes for 650k. There are some big sales in there as well. Palestri McTominay went to Southampton. We've got Garner going for £11 million. Lots of players going out on a free two. Tellez being one of them there Gilberto on loan and there you can see the rest of the exits too let's go through to the next season and have a look at who they brought in here Andreas Christensen Standergroot Angelino the left back former Manchester City player 42 million pounds there Kriako Suchek is an interesting one I think he's really good in FM I wonder in 2026 how old he's going to be at that stage there is he still at the club he's 32 now so he's got a bit of time left I suppose and then uh Bifulco is the last one they sold 20 million pounds worth of player Carvalho went to sporting being most of that some players leaving on a free two not too much in terms of notable exits in that particular summer and then we pretty much get ourselves up to date here by looking and seeing the Manchester United spent 81 million pounds on the Anzu as well as signing uh, Varelst there from Beershot. Loey Varelst, who is a new gen, put a good midfielder there. As you can see, Golliber as well. Is he a new gen? Is he, he is a new gen as well. So we've got to the point now where some non-real players are getting to, uh, to be noticed. Also, some big sales. They sold Miles Rowey and also sold Shaw during this summer. Also, Varane did move on. Let's have a look at what the side looks like now. Before we go and have a look at some of the league finishes, we already know he didn't win the league. I can also see at the top here that they finished six in this most recent season. It's not been that successful, has it? Of course, this is Simeone taking over now. So maybe this tactic here is more to reflect what Simeone is doing rather than Ten Hag. But we saw that he was playing that 4-2-3-1. We saw that Bruno Fernandes was seeming to be the most important player, didn't we? Let's have a look at the league finishes then. As we can see, the most recent season, they finished six. Their, uh, their worst points total that we've seen so far, but maybe Simeone is more responsible for that. Let's go back and have a look at previous seasons. Season before that, they finished fifth again. They love it in fifth. 65 points in what would end up being the last full season under Ten Hag. Before that, they finished on 72 points. Fifth again. Before that, they finished fifth again, which is 77. Manchester United fans, if you're wondering what you can expect from Eric Ten Hag, if you're listening to Football Manager, you're going to be finishing fifth forever. Thank you very much for watching today. This has been our Eric Ten Hag simulation at Manchester United. If you've enjoyed it, please do subscribe to the channel. Like the video if you've made it this far. You've made it to the end of the video, so you must have enjoyed it. Leave a like and I will see you next time. Thank you also to all of my Clatreon members. You can see your names down below and also in the credits as well of today's video. I'm uh, just going to leave it there. Fifth. Eric Ten Hag finishes fifth a lot. I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.